I'm Pastor George Borkhardt, and this is another Higher Things Video Short. Cancel Culture, Woke Wednesday. That's the subject of today's Higher Things Video Short. Like, subscribe, ring the bell, get the app, donate. If you love our videos, if you love us passing on the faith of the next generation, like our videos, subscribe to our YouTube channel, ring the bell for notifications, get the app. It's available on iTunes, Amazon, Google Play, Roku, Apple TV. You can get it all, all our content, all that good Christian youth content in the palm of your hand and donate. Link in the description. Your tax deductible gift keeps higher things Pass the faith, the faith of Jesus, the salvation achieved by Jesus on the cross and delivered to us in the word keeps us a rolling. And our kids need this gospel in these dark times. Erica Jacoby is the executive director of Higher Things. She is also a former public school teacher, which makes her our resident expert on today's culture. How you doing, Erica? I'm doing great. Resident expert or expert even might be an overstatement, but I appreciate the vote of confidence. We've got the Thanks dean for, for theology. We've got you for the culture. We're on our way. Call out culture, Erica. We've done a lot on the cancel culture or the call out culture and the cancel culture, the same thing. Yeah, um, I'll go ahead and define them for you. But really, they're tied together. You can't have one without the other. Um, the call out culture is what comes before the cancel part of it. Right. So um, I'm going to give a definition that was uh, used recently in a poll um, done in July 2020, actually, of American registered voters. And that they, they in that poll, they define cancel culture as the practice of withdrawing support or canceling public figures and companies after they have done or said something considered objectionable or offensive. Um, and so that objectionable or offensive thing is what you would call out, right? And then sort of the the interesting thing about that, um, because I think it's interesting to talk about what, what the results of that poll was, was that 40% of respondents said that they had withdrawn support from public figures and companies, including on social media. So a lot of this call out culture and cancel activity is going on on social media. Um, and that's because, again, uh, whoever the, the, the company or the um, public figure had done or said something that was considered objectionable or offensive. And um, 8% of people polled said they'd have engaged in this kind of behavior often. Um, the behavior differed according to age, with the majority of, of the people who answered this poll being 55% of those folks were 18 to 34 years old that said they've taken part in cancel culture. So I think that's kind of an interesting um, interesting thing to know. So it's pretty prevalent. It's pretty, it's going, it's, it's going on out there a lot. Um, is this shift in culture? Is it a good thing? Is it a bad thing? What do you think? Well, certainly, uh, I think we're starting to see that it's having some negative effects. I think calling out, uh, idealistically speaking, something that is not good or not right is not a not necessarily a bad thing to do, um, but that's 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 not exactly what's happening most of the time. Um, it's actually keeping people from discussing their differences. Um, there have even been reports uh, on campuses, on um, on high school campuses as well, and also um, secondary campuses, university campuses, that it's causing mental stress in students. It, it makes it harder for students to hold or even consider unorthodox ideas or views for fear of being shamed on social media. Um, and professors, you know, who talk about this are saying that, um, uh, that some of their students, uh, a lot of whom come from outside countries, international students shared that they had quit asking questions altogether for fear of being called ignorant or oppressive. So it's sort of shutting down the um, discourse or the sharing of ideas and sort of the um, weighing of ideas, which is what you want. You want to develop critical thinking skills uh, in students. 
So that that's kind of concerning. Uh, there's also a book that's being written uh, or that has been written that I would recommend if folks want to delve into this farther. It's called The Coddling of the American Mind. And the author of that um, is, is pretty well known. He's been quoted in several articles recently, Jonathan Haidt. Uh, they wrote that call out culture originates from what author what they refer to as safetyism on on campuses, claiming it's teaching st- students to see words as violence and to interpret ideas and speakers as safe versus dangerous. And so um, that's really, I think, the, where the danger lies a little bit there in the call-out culture and the cancel culture, because it it creates this life is about us versus them. And if you agree with whoever uh, is... Uh, is calling out that day, you're safe, you're good. And if you disagree, you're evil. Um, And so my question for you, actually, now I'm going to pass the baton to you is, what is a Christian to do in an environment when that moral compass gauge is set to cancel whatever the group doesn't like that day? What do we do as Christians about this? Because um, I know I've seen articles, we've discussed them offline about, um, Christian students getting getting really just ripped apart on social media when they say something like they love God. So what, what are we to do about this? Well, first thing I would expect that we would all understand that the world's going to cancel us. The world wants to cancel us. They want to they 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 want nothing to do with the God who gives up his life on the cross to save mankind. And so the idea that um, we can somehow avoid uh, canceling of some sort or suffering is, isn't, isn't compatible with the Christian faith. He warned us that we would suffer. People would, would do us harm and think they were doing God a service. So, um, you're expecting, uh, if as a Christian, you should expect the world to cancel you. Um, that, that's, that's, now how do you live there? Well, you don't look for it. You simply get it. It happens because, um, and it's not because you, it's not because of you. Uh, don't take it personally. The comfort is that they're not canceling you. They're canceling Jesus. Um, they're canceling Jesus for you. And so um, they're calling it out. They're canceling it because the world can handle any God. They just don't want Jesus. Um, the, the idea that Jesus lived his life, died your death, and rose again from the dead um, for you, and that that saves you, is a message that the world cannot handle. They, the world has been trying to get Jesus off that cross since the Gospels. Come down from the cross and we'll believe in you. Just don't just don't die and we'll believe in you. And so um, suffering comes with being a Christian. Canceling comes with being a Christian. Don't look for it. Um, that, that's something that has to be said to the, uh, they had to tell the early Christians, don't go and hunt out martyrdom. Um, it'll find you. So uh, expect it. It'll happen. And then... Um, uh, what to do with it, I think is a, uh, let's sort of, we got two minutes before 10 minutes and that's when Sandra gets mad. So, uh, the, the, <laughs> how to handle cancel culture. Um, I want your response. How do you think to handle it? And then I think that I'll give you my cure for it. You That'd be first. great. Sure. Um, well, I, we know that this has come about with the increase of, um, activity on social media. We're living in a different time. Kids are spending hours on their phone. This is really unprecedented in history. And so the other thing that is sort of the drawback of social media, yes, it connects us, but at the same time, there's this idea that you aren't saying it really to someone's face. You can be pretty icky online and um, you have that sort of buffer um, but people still react and feel when they see things online. And I think as a, as a, as Christian parents and pastors, uh, we can encourage kids to take time away from, um, being on social media, particularly if you're being effective and not to feel so wrapped up in it, if possible, find other ways. That would be my advice as someone who interacts with youth. But I'm curious to hear what you're going to say about it, Pastor Borghart, because I think we need to have some gospel in this situation. Well, first, uh, I think that J, uh, G.K. Chesterton, G.K. Chesterton wrote, there's a thought that, that stops thought. That is the only thought that ought to be stopped. Um, the, the culture which wow. cancels culture 
is the only can culture that needs to be canceled. Um, and that's going to happen. Uh, you live by the sword, you die by the sword. And so the cancel culture is running up against finally folks that are standing up to it and saying, um, I'm not going to cancel my, my, my favorite, you know, uh, my favorite manager because he had a tweet from 20 years ago. Um, that's the way the world needs to handle it. Uh, but we're talking specifically from the church in the church. We need to, the, the way to stop cancel culture is for us to, to, to deliver Jesus's forgiveness. What I mean by that is, is, um, I'm going to answer folks past sins by forgiving them. If someone has an awful thing that they've done, uh, if Jacoby had a tweet from 20 years ago and I found that as before the, before Twitter, but you know what I'm saying, a picture of you mm -hmm. 20 years ago, what I'm going to do is I'm going to forgive it. I'm going to make, I'm going to be intentional in forgiving it because that's my faith. So what we got to do as Christians is invoke our faith because our faith is anti-cancel culture. Christ okay. came to forgive sins. The only person that's canceled in the New Testament is Jesus. He dies so that we would live. He's canceled so that we would live. And so what I'm going to do is make this a battle of religion. I'm going to invoke my Christian faith and say, I'm just going to forgive. I'm going to forgive you because that's what my faith is. And then the fight is no longer between a culture and a person. It's between my Christian faith and the world. And that, and in America, um, for now, uh, there's freedom of religion. So that gives me the ability to, that, that stops the discussion and gives me an in to talk about Christ with the person, unless their ears are close to it. Okay. Erica Jacoby is the executive director of Higher Things. She is the face that runs the place <laughs> known as Higher Things. Erica, thank you for being on. Thanks for having me. Great discussion today. Christianity, Christian faith, your Christian faith is going to be canceled. You are going to be canceled. And the answer is not to, to be afraid of it. No, the answer is to understand where the, the cancel is coming from. They're canceling Jesus. They're not canceling you. And the answer to that is the forgiveness of sins achieved by Jesus on the cross and given in your baptism. I'm Pastor George Borkart, and this has been another Woke Wednesday Higher Things video short.